I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. This week we're going to make a painting by Françoise Guillot, who is a French painter. She was born in 1921. She's still alive. I believe this is the first art club that we have uh, done a painting by someone who is still alive. She's 98. She's best known as a uh, a, a long-term companion of Pablo Picasso. She had two kids with them, um, but she formed her own career. Uh, she was influenced by his cubism, but used more rounded, organic forms, and she has her own style. Um, sh this particular painting was done in 1992, not that long ago. Um, and uh, yeah, it was done in oils. We're using watercolors, but uh, but yeah, I think it'll be fun. I absolutely love the bright colors in this one, and let's get going. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a pencil with a good eraser and paper. I'm using watercolor paper because I'm watercoloring, uh, and you'll need something to color with. I'm using watercolors. Um, you can use crayons, pencils, pastels, whatever you have, just, just color with that. This is definitely worth coloring. I love these bright yellows and bright oranges and things. So anyway, let's get going. Okay, this one's pretty simple. So you can use a straight edge if you want to. You don't have to. Um, I don't think I'm going to this time. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is it that blue line across the middle is about across the middle. So let's see, make sure you can still see it when I shove it over here some. I'm going to draw a line that goes, oh, almost to the quarter mark about here, right in the middle. It goes like that. Okay. Drops down a little bit like that. Um, so I'm pretty much drawing the horizon. And then this goes about like that and then this goes back up and goes across like this all the way somewhat level all the way over here and then big hill Woo! And then it goes in, and then it goes, I don't know what this shape is, but it reminds me of a structure on the far right side of uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night. You might remember it if you did a uh, Starry Night Art Club with us quite a while ago. That was like the first or second one we did online. Anyway, so there's that. Um, next, I'm going to draw the big hill on the left, and this goes about here until it hits this really the bottom one right here. no until it hits this one so we're just gonna make a curve like and draw lightly preferably lighter than I am yeah okay good enough and there's this other hill right here and it goes let's see it's about the halfway point here all right and it goes this way. it goes level for a second and then slopes down to about there and then this thing goes straight down from there and then it starts right above here and then slopes down let's see we'll go ahead and draw this line up here it starts up here and just kind of slopes straight down over to there okay now I'm going to draw this line at the top for the sky. It goes here and like directly across. So just do your best or use a straight edge of, of some sort. I'm just eyeballing it and it will be good enough. Okay, so there's my line. Next I'm going to hmm, okay so this pretty much represents that blue line up there so and then here okay so here there's this 
Okay, let's just do the blue line. So there's this blue line right here, right? Then there's a green line right here. I'm not going to do all of these, but I'm going to do some of them. And okay, so there is like right here, it should be more rounded. Right here, start some orange, right? Want that straight. Right there. Okay, and this comes across. I'm going to draw one line. Well, yeah, this is it's right above this line. So I'm going to draw a line right here and it goes all the way over and kind of up the hill. All the way over here. And then up the hill and it gets narrower and narrower. Okay. And just so I'm not erasing even more lines, I'm going to draw that little house in the back, which is about here. And it goes up about here and it's just a little box like that it's a wide little door that goes about to where that blue is gonna be like right there okay I'm gonna erase this the inside of the house okay and then between these lines I'm gonna draw another one and I'm just gonna skip over the house Okay, and it goes over here, and then the orange totally takes over. Like that. Okay. Let's see. Let's go ahead and draw this house in here. It goes from about there to about there, and it's just a box with rounded corners. So I'm going to draw, let's see, and it's pretty much directly under this, but just a wee bit wider. I'm going to go, is that too low? Yes. Okay, I'm going to go about here, draw a line there, around the corners, go down about here, around my corner, okay. Around that corner, and there we go. Okay, I'm going to draw a line about here for that bright red roof, and another square in the middle of it with rounded corners. Okay, and then a window over here, it's just a rectangle and a door okay I really like that little orangey line around it and so I'm going to draw that in too I'm just going to draw a line along where this um, outside line is just like that and do the same thing over here so right parallel to it Okay, let's see. Next, we can draw, oh, my house is a little crooked, that's okay. Uh, from about here, straight down like that, and about here, straight down like that, okay? And then over here, oh, let's see, it ends about here and it starts a little lower. This little bit of land, it goes like straight across, right? And then it curves up just a little bit and hits about there. And then we're going to do the same thing really close to it. And then the same thing one more time farther away. Okay. And then there's this little bit of green that starts about here, curves out around here, and then hits right there. Okay, and then let's see what else do we have? 
How about, okay, from here, right, there's this yellow bit that I'm not going to do the whole thing because it's just two shades of yellow and that would be hard for us to do here. So I'm just going to draw a line to about here, right, and then get this blue line in here, like that. Okay, and then if you draw a line straight down here, well, let's see, let's do it like this. So if you start here, about right below where that roof is, right, and we come down some, and then we kind of go across. We go all the way to the end of the page, just sloping up ever so little. Okay, and then now where this is, you go straight down, and then draw this line a little bit longer. This gets some green and some brown, and this goes directly from under the house, straight across, and meets this line right here. Okay. I might as well put in that little bit of orange over here too. I'm just going to draw a parallel line over here and meet that. And let's put in some trees. The trees are pretty tall. They start about here and they go all the way up here. So I'm going to draw a line like this and one like this. Okay, now I'm going to draw one shape for both of them and it's just this tall shape. It goes up like this and this one it goes down and back up and then all the way around and it kind of just takes in that tree. It goes all the way over here and I forgot this line. Like that. Okay. And this one, yeah, we're not going to mess with that. And after that, there are two more over here. And so we have one ooh, about here. They come down to the same place like that. All right. And then we do the same thing with this, just line up like this, goes down and up too, and around like that. And now I'm going to go and erase these lines in the middle of our trees and draw them back in where they need to be drawn back in. That's why it helps. Oop, I covered that orange spot. That's okay. Um, that's why it helps if you mark lightly and especially really lighter than I am, but I want to make sure you can see it. Okay, I'll go ahead and draw this line down there to meet that. And then there's a little bit of green over here. Like that. And all we have left, I believe, we need to draw a little line for the roof of that. All we have left is this big, amazing, brightly colored sun. So there are a few ways we could do this. Um, I am not going to assume that you have a white pen or white watercolor or something like that, which is how I would do this. So we're going to do this differently. So we're going to draw a big oval in the sky that's slanted up this way. Way, draw lightly, make sure you're happy with it. I don't think I'm going to be happy with mine yet. Nope. Okay. So, got that. So, what I would normally do is paint the whole thing, and you can do this if you have like a white pen, like these 
Jelly Roll pens are great. Um, or white watercolor might work. White gouache would definitely work, but we're not going to assume any of that. So for the spiral, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and not curve around so much. So we're going to do this. And that. Okay. And it, well, it can go a little bit more. And then I'm going to draw a line really close to it. We are going to be very, very careful when we paint this sun and keep this white part white. Maybe, if we're lucky. This is one of those situations where it would definitely be easier to come back later and make it white. But that would, I can't tell. I can't tell how she did it. Okay. She was using oils anyway. I, I would assume that if she's that with oils, she would have to keep it separate because oils blend too easy. Okay, and I don't like that little bit. So get your sun the way you like it. Okay, and I do believe that is it. So here's what I'm gonna do. Oh, I didn't get I didn't erase the stuff. Gotta erase the stuff. Um, what you need to do now is check all of your lines, erase everything you need to erase because once you get water on it, you will not be able to erase it anymore. So um, be, be very careful about that. And what I'm also going to do and is entirely optional for you um, is I'm going to lighten it, especially since I drew so hard. I'm going to take an eraser. You can do this with a regular pen eraser. Um, this just tends to work better for me for this kind of stuff. And I am going to go over it and lighten all these lines. I need to still be able to see them, obviously, so I know where to paint. But I don't want the lines to be as vivid in the end of my painting. So I'm just going to go through like this. You've seen me do this before if you watch Art Club. And kind of erase these lines, but be sure I can still see them. Okay, I have erased all I'm going to erase. Um, I can still see my lines. I hope you can too. Um, if you want to do this step, that's great. If you don't, don't worry about it. Um, it's really not necessary. I just think for this kind of painting where we're not going to be inking anything that um, I'll be happier with the end. So let's get to painting. Okay, so I'm going to start with oranges. I generally like to save like the exciting bits like the sun for last, but I want to go ahead and do that. Ooh, string. So I'm going to get some water. I'm going to get a cloth. I'm going to get some water and get some orange over here. A lot of orange because we have the sky. Now, I really like the yellow and the orange up there. So if you want to do that, what I would suggest you do is paint it yellow. And while it's still wet, stick some orange in it. Um, but I'm just going to paint that orange. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Always test your watercolors. And remember, watercolor dries lighter than it looks when it's wet. So I am going to paint the sky. There's my sky. Next up, let's see where's my cloth. I'm going to do the sun. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use orange again and I'm going to use a really small do not drink my water please I'm going to use a small brush and just do my best not to get it in that area that needs to stay white um, if you want this to be more like the sun add some red to it like I'm going to wet this red in there I'm going to add some red to it I also have a very yellowy orange anyway so Adding some red won't hurt. Okay, let's see what this looks like. A little more.
more paint. Good. Okay. So I'm going to paint the sun. There's my sun. I got a wee bit of orange up in there, but I can fix that pretty easy. Okay. Next, let's do... I'm going to do the orange on the house. And... Yeah. Actually, I'm going to do this orange down here first because it's darker. And then I'm going to go and dilute it a lot um, for the this bottom part of the house. So let's do this line. It is the bottom line. And the door, hit the door of this thing too. Okay, now I'm going to add, you can see this, a good bit of water to this to dilute it, make it less bright. I'm gonna, let's see. Test it. Yeah, once it dries, that'll be good. And I'm going to do this bottom part of the house, including the window and door. And there we go. And now all we have left of the orange is this line here and it goes to right there where that vertical line is that you might or might not be able to see. And I believe that is it for the orange, which is okay. Now we find things that don't touch it, which is this color here. Now in the painting that is an olive green. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my warmer green and add some brown to it. I'm going to get some green and some brown. Yeah, that'll work. More green more brown. I'll have to clean that up later. I'm going to make an olivey earth tone green. Okay, mix it up really good and then let's see what it looks like. Yeah, we're getting there. Good enough. Okay, and I'm going to paint this top part, this, go around the trees. Actually, it doesn't matter because those are just brown. And then that up there. I'm going to use a bigger brush. Okay, that did touch the orange, but um, the orange was dry enough that it did not run, which is good. Um, next, all this orange is probably dry. Next up, let's do the regular green. I'm going to get my smaller brush because these are all small areas. And I'm going to get my cool green. If you only have one green, that is perfectly fine. Use what you got. good. Yep. Okay. I'm going to paint. Let's see. Let's make this, this little area right here. This. Forgot to draw this. Let's do that really fast. Nothing. And this comes out right above that. And this down and like that. Now I erase it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to paint that, that, and that, and this little top bit over here. I'm going to do this blue, but you can decide which one you want to do because it has definitely has some green in it.
there's our green and let's see I think we're safe to put in the blue now I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm gonna get let's see that one's so weak I'm gonna use my strong glue oh, it's just right here make sure you can see one of my favorite things about watercolor is that you can re-wet it okay so you're not wasting paint So I'm going to paint, let's see what is there, this line that goes across the trees, this little bit, this little bit, it's hard to tell if that's green or blue, but I'm going with blue, and that over there, and then, yeah, and that line across there. See, there's our blue. That's it, yep. Okay. What is next? We have brown. Really, before the yellow, that's about it. So, this needs to go. This is dry enough. Make sure. Your blue here is dry enough before you try painting it because you don't want them to run together. So I'm going to paint this, this, and this brown. We also need to paint the trees. Make sure your blue is dry. And if you end up going over it, all it's going to do is darken it and make it more toward black and so don't don't worry about it if you uh, if you go over that I also see that I forgot the roof of this little house over here so I'm going to get that and make it orange really fast little line Okay, and we're going to look, and I think everything else that we're going to paint is yellow. So, I am going, whoop, 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 I missed a little blue. After I paint this little blue, um, everything else, oh, there that is, will be yellow. Let's see, uh, much better, much better. Okay. So double check, yep, okay. So what I'm gonna do now is so the yellow doesn't run into anything, I am going to dry this whole painting. So make sure your painting is dry and then we'll do the yellow. I see one more thing, there's always one more thing. You see what it is? Yeah, this roof right here, except for that square in the middle needs to be red. So I'm gonna paint it red and then I am going to dry it again. And now my painting is dry and it is time to get to the yellow. So there's a lot of yellow to get to. Yellow, yellow, that, 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 and all of this. So I'm going to paint that yellow and then I believe we will be done with the painting part. Let's go. And that's it. Uh, I am going to do one more thing. I'm going to dry it down here uh, so I can sign it. And then we'll be done. Okay, I've been painting wondering if at the beginning of the, of the uh, video I said that the name of this painting is Summer Solstice. And since we are in the depths of summer here in the Deep South, that I, I thought that that was, you know, timely. But uh, we'll see, there might be a little asterisk at the beginning. Anyway, um, if you look down at the bottom right of that painting, you see her signature, which I think is really neat with that circle. That is not what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign it my usual way. I'm going to use this blue. And don't forget to sign your painting because you made it. And thus, it is awesome. Okay. 
There is my signature. I like this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do one more thing. You see the little, the little house? Um, it's kind of like a pinky color there or a super light orange. I'm going to get some orange up here. Put a lot of water in it. And I'm going to paint that little guy right there real fast. Not get my hand in my signature or anything else will dry much ah much lighter and greener than I want or gray it's okay this blue just really wants its presence known okay so there's that little house I think that looks a little bit better anyway now I'm calling this thing done so I hope you like this I enjoyed it um, Hila's paintings are varied in style. Um, she's definitely changed a lot in her many, many years of being an artist, and it's worth looking through. She also wrote a well, really well-known book called uh, Life with Picasso, which you can check out from the library. I know we have physical copies of it. And yeah, if you're peeling off tape, do it slowly and carefully so you don't ruin your painting. And here we go. Summer Solstice by Francoise Guillot. Uh, and I hope you paint along with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't mess up my new painting. Uh, and if you did paint along, please share your a picture of it to the library social media. We love to see what you do. And join me next week for Art Club. We will do more art. Bye.